Well, hello everyone, Philosopher Stoner 666 here. And holy shit, just looking at myself and the camera here. I look tired. <laughs> I'm weary. I look very disheveled. I need to fucking shave. I just don't give a shit about anything, man. So I'm at work. Not gonna tell you where I work though. That would be a security violation. And yes, I'm a guard now. I work for uh, Commissioners Security, which is a not-for-profit security company that has, well, it gives preferential treatment to like veterans and former RCMP people and stuff. It's one of the better companies because the sites are more secure. No pun intended. Uh, like their government contracts and stuff. So it's sort of like the upper echelon of the security world. Oh my goodness me, now. I know, I better not get too big for my boots. <laughs> oh boy. So yeah, I wanted to talk about uh, more antinatalism stuff. Yay. So a very curious incident happened. I went to have something to eat and then I went to this like food court place and a guy ran into me. Hey, do I know you? Um, and he was an old friend of mine back when I was in university. I ran a philosophy club, the Frederick Nietzsche Society. And I've made videos on Nietzsche and stuff in the past. And I believe, no, he was wrong. He's very poetic. He's a good writer and stuff. Like, I still like Nietzsche, but he was fundamentally wrong. And he's not a philosopher. He's a poet. And when Schopenhauer was right, I always think of the, the quote, after coitus, the devil's laughter can be heard. And, you know, it's just so fucking true. Anyways, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So I ran to this guy. Hey, do I know you? And it was a guy from this club that I used to run. We had a bad parting of ways. I think I might have told him to fuck off or something. We had like a fight. Anyways, we, we went separate directions. He, I had taught in China, and he had taught in China as well, too. And it was very odd, our meeting again. He's now living in um, uh, where, where I live, in the same city. And he's homeless. And he, his, his, he got into a fight, a physical argument with my father, which I told him I relate to that because I've had a few physical fights with my dad. And I'd also been temporarily homeless as well, too. This was about two years ago. I tried to get a hotel after I had a, a big fight with my father, a physical fight. Couldn't get a hotel, didn't have any other friends or no one else to, to go to to stay, sleep on their couch for a night or whatever. So I stayed at a homeless shelter for about three nights. Anyway, so now this, this friend of mine, he's homeless too and in the similar sort of situation. He has no content, no connections, doesn't have a job, whatever. So I felt sorry for him. So we met up the next day in the park and I brought a little bit of liquor, a little bit of dope, and some cigarettes. Now, I'm a, I'm a vaping guy. And I just got so drunk and stoned, I said, fuck it. And I bought a pack of smokes. And that's very bad. I shouldn't do that. Just for my, my health. But it was, I was in a very low point, a bad mood. So my, my point here is, is uh, forget all this personal shit. Most natalists don't want to think about, well, what could happen to your kid? Or even what could happen to yourself. Like all kinds of shit can happen. You don't ever stop to think that your kid might wind up homeless one day. If they're a girl or whatever, they might wind up a prostitute or a drug addict or a, yeah, a bum living on the streets. Or they might wind up retarded or disabled. Or there's just a million different things that can happen that you, know, you have no control over. That. You could like in this guy's situation, he, he has he assaulted his father and I got into a fight and I can relate to that. But it's sort of like he is reaping the consequences of his own actions and he is an adult. So it's sort of, you know, it is his fault, but then it's not his fault as well, too. It's a bit of both. And we can say we can look at anybody's life and analyze their life and dissect it and say, OK, yeah, this was that person's fault. But then this other thing that happened to them wasn't their fault. It was just the circumstance. But let's face it, people. It's in the cards. Dealing the cards, it, the odds, 
there's a certain percentage chance of whatever XYZ bad thing happening to you. And it's almost guaranteed that at least some point in your life, something bad is going to happen and you have no control over it and there's nothing you can fucking do about it. Just besides the fact that we all get old and we die eventually. Death is guaranteed. There's no, there's no getting past that. So anyways, yeah, all this shitty stuff can happen and uh, natalists don't want to take the responsibility for it. They sort of, it's a glib, it's a, it's a symptom of this glibness where they think, oh, nothing bad's going to happen to me. And we have all this propaganda out there that there is like, oh yes, the happy family and the grandparents with the little children and it's all just so quaint and nice and, and lovely. And we never stop to think about, well, the odds are eventually something bad's going to happen. Eventually you're going to lose. There will be times in your life where you may win or think you're winning, but there are no winners here. There was my video is kind of rambly, not very coherent, but yes, ultimately Schopenhauer was right. Ultimately, I've been through enough bad stuff in my life too that I'm very grateful. I've lived a privileged life. I've lived an above average life. I've already made that point in my videos, but I've still, I've had bad stuff happen to me and I've just seen how teetering on the, the precipice of the, the brink of how, of how fragile it all is. Your life can fall apart just like that. And so this friend of mine, we were drinking liquor, smoking dope, whatever. I was trying to console him and make him feel better. He had a bit of a breakdown. He almost started crying. He didn't actually cry, but like he almost did. And he was doing weird stuff like going like this and closing his eyes and waving his hands around. And he was just like, oh, I'm just so glad that I don't, I always, like I, I always have to perform. And around you, I don't have to perform. And it was true. I don't really give a shit. He doesn't have to perform for me. And uh, yeah, so it's just been on my mind. I've been a little bit extra depressed because of it. I'm gonna maybe help him get a cleaning job or something. I know some people I used to work with when I cleaned, maybe get him that. And I told him he should consider do that for a bit, save up and get a security guard license. At least it's a job. Like I'm not optimistic, like he, uh, that was another thing I was thinking about, the, the trappings of natalism, all these requirements that you have to meet in order to be a successful human being, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And he was going on about where in my life, how come I don't have a girlfriend and I don't have a job and I don't have a this and I don't have a, a this and a that. And it's all need and it's all want and it's all social status shit. It's like you can never be what you are. You know, it's it's never it's never complete. You know, it's just I don't even know well what the fuck I'm saying now anymore, but yes, the trappings, like you have to meet all these requirements to be successful. And I think survival in our society is very easy. Like lucky we're in a first world country where there are homeless shelters and there are institutions that we do sort of take care of people. So survival is easy, but success is impossible because we have a very skewed value system. So he, I don't think my friend will be successful. He won't necessarily be able to pull himself out that much, but I think he can at least get like a shitty job and get back on his feet and not be homeless. I think that's achievable. And I hope so. I hope it happens for him and I'll try to help him. I feel bad as well because of my... I've been seeing a psychiatrist and I've applied for this thing called the disability tax credit. I have high functioning Asperger's, ADHD, depression, and social anxiety disorder. And according to like the stuff, because I live in Canada, you can apply, if you have, there's this list of conditions, if you have them, you can apply for the disability tax credit. So I'm socially disabled. And because of that, I see a pattern in my life of social failures with people. I've had them with a lot of people and eventually I don't read cues, subtle cues. I don't pick up on people's intentions. I maybe think a person is my friend when maybe they only view me as an acquaintance. Um, I'm not socially, I'm disconnected. I don't get it. And it's caused me a lot of problems in my life. And this guy that I met, the, the, the homeless guy that I've been talking about, we had a similar falling out. It's a similar sort of the same problem that I've repeated with many different people. And so I hope, well, okay, I buy him some liquor and some dope, maybe try and find him a job. And I've helped and I've made amends for being basically an asshole. I think I'd like, like I said, I think I told him to fuck off or something. I, 
I lost my temper, me and my temper and my potty mouth. And anyways, yeah, that's sort of it. But like I said, uh, life, life doesn't have one of those, you know, on the pack of cigarettes, how it's like a health warning label. Life doesn't come with that, but it should. There should be a label on life. Bad, shitty things can happen to you, and there's no guarantee of any guarantee of any particular outcome. Be buyer beware. You know, really, you should really stop and pause and think before you're going to impose something on people of all the possible bad things that can happen. And the only way to guarantee nothing bad happening is to not create the problem in the first place. Anyways, I assume that's enough of a video for now. Philosopher Stoner six 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 out. Oh wait, there's a. I'm filming on a camera, and then there's a camera filming me on a camera, and it's like a weird inception of cameras. Woo, far out, dude. Anyways, Lost for Stoner six 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 out.